Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiryFantasyArt.com and welcome to another illustration video tutorial. So in this tutorial, uh, the request was uh, quite simple. Uh, it was that I draw a scorpion. Now there was no details as to whether or not it had to be a mechanical scorpion or it had to be an organic one, um, So or the scale of the creature. Uh, so for this reason, I actually decided to make uh, more of a monster-like uh, scorpion design. And I went for essentially an oversized uh, creature. Now for this drawing, I did have to look at quite a bit of anatomy references on uh, how the scorpion is actually made up in order to come up with this drawing. Because uh, I needed to know how the exoskeleton was generally composed and how uh, the anatomy of this creature was actually uh, designed. So. As I was working, as you can see, I started off with a super rough drawing, um, and this just allowed me to uh, really work out uh, the general information before I started investing too much time in the overall drawing. Uh, so right now you can see me actually trying to flesh out a little bit more of the information that I already have uh, before I actually start painting. Now, I will not end up keeping this initial painting. Um, I do end up removing that and starting over again because I don't like the color palette that I currently have um, but uh, once I start restart the drawing uh, you'll see why I actually restarted because uh, I just didn't like the way the drawing was going and since it was still fairly early in the drawing process it didn't require that much time for me to restart um, sometimes it's better to restart sometimes it, it isn't uh, it really depends on how you're feeling about the drawing if you're trying a bunch of stuff and it's not working then uh, perhaps it's better to restart um, but you still have to be mindful of the fact of deadlines because uh, if this was uh, due like in an hour then I, I really didn't have I would not have the option of uh, actually restarting this um, but that wasn't the case so uh, essentially I had until um, I had to go to bed uh, to work on this so uh, I just kept with the drawing and restarted it uh, to something that I was much more comfortable with. Uh, since this didn't have a deadline, that does help a lot. So I'm just trying to figure out at the moment uh, how to actually draw that claw. And uh, part of the reason why I actually restarted was because I didn't like how the claw was actually starting to look. I didn't like the colors. Um, the colors just weren't working for this drawing. Uh, so I ended up restarting from scratch. Uh, it was a good thing too because uh, the final drawing does look a lot better uh, than what I, I initially had at this point. So at this point I probably invested between uh, 40 minutes to an hour in the actual drawing before I realized you know I don't like this. Uh, so what I did is I added a overlay layer and uh, on that overlay layer I actually added some color uh, to start my color palette for this drawing. Uh, it worked a lot better by doing this um, and I was able to get the information down a lot faster uh, so I was much happier with the results that I got. So as you can see I'm just trying to figure out the, the general anatomy as I'm working. I'm also trying to figure out uh, where I'm going to have my shadows at this point because everything is extremely rough. I, I don't really have all that much information there right now. And I am actually using uh, that new brush that I created. I'm still testing it out, see uh, whether or not I like it. Um, I might end up keeping it, I might not. Um, the brush really, like I said in the past, really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just using it to uh, figure out whether or not I'm comfortable actually dealing with a, a flat brush, because I've seen a lot of artists actually use the flat brush. Um, as it stands, it's an okay brush. Uh, I might keep it. Uh, I do like it a little bit better than just using the round brush because of the harder edges that it produces, uh, which is kind of nice, especially if you're doing really quick concepts. And uh, next week's uh, video tutorial will actually be a uh, dwarf drawing that I actually drew. I drew two dwarf drawings though uh, this week. So one was done on the Google Hangouts. Uh, this one was done on my own time, so it was properly recorded. Um, so you're going to see that one instead and I will be using that specific brush uh, but as it stands I've just actually switched to the round brush um, which is uh, essentially my main brush that I do use 
uh, mainly because I can get really soft details, but then I always have the option of really shrinking down my brush and getting much uh, harder uh, edges to my drawing. Uh, because of this, uh, I use this brush a lot. I also know that a lot of art artists also use uh, this brush. Uh, I'm assuming for the same reasons, I could be entirely wrong, uh, but I do have a strong preference towards this brush for sure. And it's the simplest brush you have, um, which is really, really nice. Uh, the simpler the brush, uh, generally the better. Uh, it doesn't slow down your computer as much, especially if you uh, increase its size. And since I'm working at 300 dpi as I do this, it's always a good idea to have um, a brush that doesn't slow down the computer. Uh, now I, I do work at 300 dpi just to give myself some more leeway in the final printing size for my drawing. Um, a lot of, Some artists don't really care about the resolution, uh, especially when you're starting to um, draw something that's extremely large in format. Um, I personally do like working at 300 dpi, it gives me much more crisp results, uh, but it is personal preference too. And when I was working at the printer, as long as the image is going to be smaller than 19 by 13, 300 dpi is really good because you do get a lot of good information. It does become extremely problematic though if you're um, printing something that's extremely large. So the moment you get to uh, 16 by 20 or anything around that size, you're looking at 300 dpi. And most computers, most printing computers, have difficulties working with that size. Uh, because the load time alone in their software is tremendous. And that's even if it's been saved as a PDF. Uh, so you may want to consider that as a reason to actually downgrade your resolution prior to printing, uh, depending on uh, what the printer can handle uh, file-wise. And that's something you wouldn't know unless you actually uh, talk to them either. So I'm just working on the foremost claw. Because uh, this claw is uh, closest to the viewer, it does require much more information. Uh, so as I'm detailing out the bottom of this uh, scorpion, I will be adding much more detail in the front portion of the scorpion as well as that main claw area. Uh, like I said, these are main portions and have to have the most detail because they're closest to the viewer. Uh, if they were further back, I wouldn't have to add as much detail as you can see in the back tail. I've kept it extremely simple and I've actually faded out most of that detail. And the reason for that is because it's so further back, you don't require all that much. So although I uh, uh, softened out most of that um, receding clouds that I just added, um, I did keep it, but I just reduced the opacity of it so that it wasn't as overwhelming for this drawing. Just working on the trees right now. I'm actually going to be starting very shortly uh, detailing out uh, more fully um, the actual scorpion once I've actually established my actual light source, since I haven't done that yet. Um, so as you can see, I've just started adding in that main light source. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to darken certain areas uh, and also add far more detail. Um, it's important to wait until you have actually put your lighting and main light source in before you do that, because if you don't, then you can potentially end up adding too much uh, too soon. And that's very difficult. Well, you could technically paint it out, but it's very time consuming. So you do end up saving a lot of time if you wait uh, until you've actually added your main light source before adding all that extra information. So I'm detailing out that uh, foremost portion of the scorpion. Uh, it's closer to the viewer once again, so it requires more detail. Um, but I still need to show that certain portions of the scorpion are uh, further back. So I'm going to be um, lightening up certain colors, uh, even though I still have about the same amount of detail, uh, just to bring back further some of those elements and then bring other elements forward more. Adding all those uh, extra information into that claw right now. Now, uh, on that top part of the shell, I will add uh, two glowing eyes. 
Um, I was looking at uh, obviously some scorpion reference and they actually tend to have multiple eyes. I didn't draw multiple eyes uh, or hinted at multiple eyes in the final drawing. Um, I just didn't see the need to it because uh, this creature is so large anyway. Um, he's technically not realistic so uh, for this reason I, I don't have to keep all the anatomy 100% accurate um, but I do have to keep it somewhat accurate so it's somewhat believable as well. Darkening up that shadow area a little bit more um, and now I've actually started lightening up uh, some of that side portion of uh, the exoskeleton. Uh, now bugs normally can't grow to this size. Uh, the reason why you normally see small bugs as you see today is because the gravity is just too strong and their exoskeletons just wouldn't be able to support an extremely large version of uh, an insect. Uh, lucky for us because personally I would not want to have a giant tarantula in uh, my backyard. Um, but uh, if it's a monster you don't have those restrictions. Uh, so maybe this is a different world. Um, maybe this is uh, super mutated. Maybe it's partially bug light on the outside, but it actually has some tissue inside. Maybe it's slight. Um, its exoskeleton is actually almost a skin light uh, armor. Uh, we don't know that. So uh, taking all those things into consideration, uh, you do have a lot more leeway when you're doing a fantasy based painting like this. So I'm adding a bit more detail to those trees because uh, I do have to tie in the fact that it is closer to the viewer. So because it's closer to the viewer, I do have to add more detail um, and some sharper detail uh, than what's in that scorpion. Now I'm uh, receding back some of the, the legs uh, and I'm just modifying the transparency on that so that's not overly done and I'm experimenting with some foliage as you can see right now. I ended up uh, not keeping most of the foliage, I only kept uh, some of it because I didn't want to overdo the foliage for this drawing. So this drawing is nearly completed as you can see, I'm just adding some additional colors If you want to have your say on what's drawn for next week's video tutorial or have some additional questions about my drawing process, please leave a comment below. I will take the feedback you guys give me and try to answer your questions while working on next week's painting. If you want to see some of my previous works, please feel free to check out the annotations on the side of this video or visit my channel for the full playlist. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you and take care.